What's up everyone? Welcome to episode 9 of the Jimmy Restoration Series in partnership with O'Reilly Auto Parts. In today's video we're going to be tackling the most requested video up to this point and that's swapping the digital instrument cluster from my parts truck over to the new one. For those of you wondering, this is not a plug and play swap. It involves a lot of wiring. While it's not super difficult, it is really tedious. You need the wiring schematics to be able to know what wires go where and whatnot. And again, you have to be really careful because you are working with the factory harness. But I think this upgrade is going to be very worthwhile because the digital cluster is so cool. It's, it's so 1980s and it's one of the reasons why I originally bought this truck in the first place. And it's a shame that it blew head gasket and all that kind of stuff. But this truck led to the Jimmy series as it is today. This truck still has a lot to offer. So without further ado, let me go ahead and give you a quick tour of the cluster. All right, let's go ahead and see if she'll fire up. That little clicking that you hear is because I don't have the hazard switch mounted in the steering column, so it's kind of freaking out. We have the battery in. Let's see how she does. There's the cluster. Super, super cool. Come on. Come on. Almost. Come on. There we go. Ooh, she is not happy. Not happy at all. That's Runs good. That's terrible. One owner. <laughs> I can. I smell like smoke now. <laughs> <laughs> so the Jimmy that we're fixing up right now has the analog cluster, which was the standard cluster from like 1986 until the point that they stopped making all these square bodies. I think the only major change during that time was uh, 1988 or 1989. Uh, I can't remember which. They went from a, a mechanical speedometer cable to a digital signal. Now, these did have the option for a tachometer. I've never seen one in person. I've just seen some pictures, but obviously this one doesn't have it. So having the tachometer would be super cool. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with this cluster. All the lights show up. It's easy to read at night, and I honestly think it's kind of cool with that blue background and just the, uh, you know, the orange needles that go across, but the digital cluster just, its coolness outweighs this coolness, so let's go ahead and start the swap. Here's how we're going to do it. I have a wire harness pigtail from an analog cluster and one from a digital cluster. This is why this isn't a plug and play swap. You actually have to rewire it and have the schematics to know which of these wires correspond to these wires. It does look daunting, but as long as you have the schematics, it's not quite so daunting, but it's still kind of daunting. <laughs> but anyway, this is what we're going to be doing. I am wiring in brand new connectors. So with the other side plugged in, you have that little doodah. So this end will go into the factory harness that's already in the jimmy and we have this new harness to adapt the new plug. Now I'm going to go one step further as well and wire up a new connector to this one so if goodness forbid something happened with the instrument cluster or the digital one to where it stopped working or it burned out you know that is an unfortunate risk of these old digital clusters i would be able to easily plug the original analog cluster back in so i would still have a working instrument cluster i'll talk more about how i assembled these connectors a little bit later but giving credit where it's due a gentleman named michael aki made these amazing instructions that I found online of how to do this conversion. It's got all of the wiring schematics matching everything up and it just 
it makes it seem so easy. So just want to give a quick shout out to him. I don't know if he'd ever see this video or not, but amazing, amazing write up. Um, I'll include the link to it in the description box below if anybody else out there is interested in doing something similar to their vehicle. Instead of boring you guys with taking everything apart twice, I went ahead and removed the digital cluster out of the parts jimmy. We'll do the in-depth disassembly on the other one, but this came out super, super easy. I was, I was not really expecting it to be as easy as it was, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's just a matter of undoing a bunch of nuts and screws and then pulling it out. Here is what the inside of the dashboard looks like without the instrument cluster. So here is the harness that's specific for the digital cluster. The analog one would sit right there, which you guys will see in just a moment. Here are all of the headlight wires and other things on that side, all the HVAC controls. So it's pretty cool, very simple. With that out of the way, we can now tackle the analog cluster. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is remove this lower trim plate that sits underneath the steering column. To do that, there's a black cover that's around like the fuse box area and stuff. We gotta take out the data link connector and we gotta remove the park and brake release lever. The trim plate's held in by a bunch of Phillips head screws. The under tray is held in by a bunch of 9 30 second bolts. The data link connector is held in by two Phillips head screws. Once we undo that, the connector can just hang free. Now we can go ahead and remove the Phillips head screw for the park and brake release lever, but we have to go up underneath the dash and disconnect it before we can remove it fully. This trim plate looks like it's two separate pieces, but it's not. You have to remove this brake release lever in order to take this whole assembly out. And it's pretty easy. This lever is attached to a cable with a little nut or stud or whatever you want to call it at the end. It's looped into a hook on this bracket. The bracket is for the parking brake. So when you push that in, you pull it, pulls that cable, pulls the bracket, and releases the lever. So what we have to do is reach up inside and push that bracket towards the rear of the vehicle, that'll give us enough slack to where we can slip the cable over the little retaining clip and then it will just pop on out. Everything is free now, so all we have to do is just pull the trim panel out. There should be a vent tube that connects there, but it's not connected, which Probably explains why that lower vent wasn't producing air, so <laughs> I can fix multiple problems here. Now we're going to start tackling the switch panels on either side of the instrument bezel. Remember, before you start tackling any kind of electronics on your vehicle, disconnect that negative battery terminal so you don't risk a possible short, so you don't end up hurting yourself, your vehicle, or both. The Jimmy was originally equipped with a rear defroster as well as power mirrors. The controls are located in these little pods beneath the big switch panels. Before we can tackle the switch panels, we have to remove the little pods. There's a couple of Phillips head screws in each. The climate control panel is a bit trickier because we have three levers here. There's a vacuum system attached. There's a gear that is attached to this lever that goes to the vacuum system. There's a cable on the other side that opens and closes a flap in the dash to switch between hot and cold. So there's a lot of stuff that can break right here and it's just so important to take time. You can start removing some of the connectors that are easy to access just to make maneuvering this switch assembly a bit easier, but take your time. Don't be aggressive with it. It all comes apart. You just don't want to go too hard at it. We are making great progress. Now it's time to remove the instrument cluster bezel. It's probably hard to see in there, but there are four nuts holding that in. So we just have to take a 10 millimeter nut driver. It's one of those right there. Unscrew them and just pop it out.
Okay, this thing should just lift right off. Bring the shifter down out of the way. Alright, that's what I'm talking about. The only thing left holding the cluster on now, except for the, the plug on the back, are these little nuts. There's one on each corner, so once we get these off, we should be able to pull the cluster right out. tolerances on this one are a little tighter than the digital cluster. Oh, I forgot one more thing. Important. Remove the cable that connects the, the shifter to the selector right here. It's super easy. I have the transmission down in first gear right now, again, just to make clearance, but this is the cable. It snakes down the column or just wraps around right here, and it's attached to this little metal bracket. All you have to do is just push that bracket off, and there's like a, like a spring assembly in the instrument cluster. Um, when I'm moving it up and down, you can see the gear selector moving up and down. All you would have to do is put it back to be able to connect it to the shifter and have it fully functioning again. So if it's a little bit off um, and you want to try to see if you can adjust it, try tackling this little cable. And we're free. Let's see. Very different back here from the different uh, from the uh, digital one. That's where the connector goes down there. All this circuitry and stuff has always been fascinating to me. I don't understand how this tape or whatever it is has metal on it to transmit all that stuff. Super cool. There's not a whole lot of room to pull out this harness, so I may cut a little hole right here just making sure all the other wires and stuff are out of the way just to give us a little bit more clearance but interesting thing I was comparing the harness that I pulled out of the parts yard and uh, this one must have been from a uh, blazer or whatever that did not have ABS because this number 10 connector right here was for the anti-lock indicator lamp and I have that I mean I knew it had ABS but uh, that's where the lamp goes uh, number 13 is blank on both of them. That's for the daytime running light indicator, which these don't have daytime running lights. And uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 is the upshift light. So you wouldn't have that unless you had a manual transmission. So that's pretty cool. So I decided to go ahead and cut a hole in this plastic right here uh, just to give some extra room with working with the wires. If you do this, make sure to push the factory harness back. There are some retaining clips that you have to undo. I just used my nut driver or something with a nice like round or wide surface just to push it back so you don't pierce it or do anything like that. You definitely don't want to cut into the harness because then you're going to have all sorts of problems so we got plenty of clearance we're gonna go a little bit at a time and just cut out enough to make enough room we don't we don't want to cut too much um, so now I'm just gonna take my file and get everything nice and smooth okay guys here's where it's gonna get really stressful we are going to cut the original plug off of the harness and start wiring this thing in one by one. So according to these diagrams, which again is absolutely awesome, that guy did a fantastic job. So it has a diagram for the analog one, one for the digital one, and then another one that matches them up. So if we take a look at this and look at where pin number one came from, um, that is the temperature sensor input that is matched to number six on this one. 
um, which yeah, that's right, coolant temperature sensor. So basically what I'm gonna do is the harness that's still in it, I'm gonna cut the wire off one by one. That's the sixth position right there. So I would cut this off right at the terminal because we don't need this or this is my spare. This is like my uh, my, my safety of, of like knowing where things are. So we don't need the one that's actually in the truck. So we'll cut that, go ahead and put our new connector on there. This is the, I guess, I guess you would call it the receiving end. It would go in this big section that will end up plugging into the one that I've already wired. But anyway, before I get ahead of myself. So we're gonna cut the wire one by one, wire the, the other little pin on it, go ahead and put it in there and have this off to the side. Um, making sure to match the numbers on here with the numbers that I've with the numbers that are on here. Whew. So this this is where it gets uh if anything goes wrong it's gonna be really hard to try to figure out what went wrong. So um yeah let's just jump into it. I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video that I was also going to wire a connector to this as well, but I'm gonna do that after everything is tested and working, hopefully. By doing that, it will allow me to interchange the instrument clusters in case the digital cluster goes bad. But anyway, so we don't need this right now, we need these. These little connectors are attached to this little metal piece, so we just need to move it a little bit to where it will break off. We need to strip the wire a little bit, feed it in, and these tabs need to be bent down to hold the, the, hold the sheathing and the bare wire in place. And then you push this into the little plastic housing. It's got little teeth on it that will lock it in place. It's important to remember that there are multiple ways to go about doing this. For me, making the new connectors just made more sense. But regardless of whichever way you decide to tackle your electrical project, O'Reilly has anything and everything to get you taken care of, from wires to connectors, soldering irons, crimping tools, and so much more. It's super convenient. So how's it going? good so far. I've noticed that uh, a lot of the colors match. Um, this this is the, I guess the hot plug for the alternator. Um, I did notice one difference between the harness for the analog and the digital. So the left turn signal and right turn signal on the digital harness has just one wire going to it, but on the analog there's two. So I don't know, there's nothing in this little write-up that says anything about that, so I just combined the two wires into one. So we'll see if it works. I mean, this is kind of a guessing game anyway. <laughs> We're trying the best we can, but let's see. I, uh, that's This is the rest of the plug. Uh, after I hook this one up, I have one, two, three, four, five wires left. Two, three, four, yeah. So. We're getting there. This is the last wire I have to put in before we can test it out. I'm not gonna hook up the tachometer or the dimmer quite yet until I make sure this works, but let's get that last pin in there. Oh, that click is so satisfying. All right, they're all in. I had to add an extra ground for the digital cluster that wasn't there with the analog. So at this point, we should be able to hook this up that I made. We'll just set the cluster right here and hope for the best. <laughs> okay, everything is plugged up. It looks okay. Let's get this positioned right here. <sighs> okay. Moment of truth. Please work. Please, 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 please. Yes! Yes! Woo! Oh, look at that. Look how awesome that is. 
Oh my gosh, the oil pressure, the voltometer. I don't know why it just dimmed that for a second, but it shows that the parking brake is on. The fuel level is correct. Oh my gosh, no way. No way. The tachometer doesn't work yet because I don't have the cable hooked up. Let's see, English to metric. Woo, look at that. Drip. Yup. Yes. <laughs> Still don't know why it's dimming. Oh, it's probably because of the headlights. Something about the headlights not being in or on or something. I don't know. Or? I don't know. I'll figure it out. <laughs> this is so awesome! Look how 80s! Still gotta figure out why it's dimming, but that's so cool! <laughs> All right, guys, we're about ready to wrap this thing up. But first, last night, I decided to spend a little bit of extra time and just double check my work to make sure I wasn't missing anything. And I actually found the sources of our dimming problems. There's actually two things and just super simple. The reason why the cluster as a whole kept dimming every time I touched it was basically <laughs> because I forgot to plug in the main harness all the way. So, whoops. But every time you flip a turn signal, when it would illuminate in the cluster, it would cause the cluster to dim as well. And that was actually a wire that I forgot to hook up because there's actually two different ways that you can do it. If you do not want the cluster to dim when you flip the headlights on, then you would just ground terminal six. But if you do want it to dim, which why, why would you not want it to dim, you would take a wire and splice it directly into this brown wire in the Sentinel dimmer assembly. So flip the headlights on, it dims, and you can adjust it from there. So that's super cool. Now let's go ahead and do another quick test just to make sure everything is working properly now. Fantastic. I love it, love it, love it. All the warning lights work. The park and brake light is on because I have it pressed in, so that's working as it should. I have the tachometer wired in now. I'll show you how I did that in just a second. See all the gauges up there are working just fine. Let's go ahead and flip the headlights on. It dims, you can adjust the brightness. Let's see, high beam indicator. The sequential turn signals, which is probably, I'm sure you guys would agree, the coolest feature of the entire cluster. It's it's awesome. It's it's just awesome. <laughs> um, the only bummer, I guess, is is the mileage. I can't get the mileage reprogrammed. I've reached out to several companies. I thought I had some prospects, but in my following up and clarifying things, it just seems like you can't reprogram these digital clusters. It's just an unfortunate side effect of doing the swap is that the mileage is just gonna change. So the Jimmy had a little over 207,000 miles on it to begin with. So I'm just gonna keep detailed records. I obviously still have the analog cluster I'm gonna keep with the truck, but uh, you know, that's not that big of a deal. Speaking of mileage, it is really hard to find these clusters in good shape. They, you know, just like any digital cluster of this era, it can burn out here and there and stuff. Um, and the fact that this has 239,000 miles showing on the odometer, and the fact that nothing is wrong, it's just great. So that's a, that's a big cost savings right there. Now, if something did happen to it, you can get these rebuilt. That's not an issue. You can go and buy reman clusters. You can send it off to have it rebuilt. So if something happened to it, it's not that big of a deal. We can get it fixed. We can use the analog cluster in the meantime. So all is good. Regarding the TAC, GM actually left provisions for the TAC even if the vehicle didn't come with it. So there's a little white wire that comes out of the ECM harness and plugs into this little connector. 
if the vehicle came with a tack, that white wire would continue out of the connector and up to the cluster harness. But because this one did not, the white wire just truncates at the connector. So what I had to do is cut that wire out of the connector, splice in a new wire, and run it connect it to my new harness and plug and everything and just hook it up. Simple as that. I took the Jimmy out for a quick test drive just to make sure the speedometer was working properly and it is. Everything is looking really, really good, but I noticed one more thing that we're going to have to do. And I don't know why I didn't think about it earlier, but on top of the cluster, it says 89 Jimmy, which doesn't make sense because the one I pulled it from is a 94. So I wonder if the original cluster in that one had gone bad and they just put a different one in it, which means who knows how many miles that truck probably has on it. But anyway, the older digital clusters required a constant power source to store the trip data. Um, that being said, when I'm driving it down the road, the odometer is working, but it's not working as accurately as it needs to be because sometimes you turn it off and if it's... 500 239,587 it might go back to 86 or if it's 88 it'll go back to 87 so it's something with the trip data and how it's being stored so we're going to go ahead and wire up a constant power source probably to the cigarette lighter or something like that and then take it back on the road and make sure everything is good all right got my constant power source wired up before going any further, let's go ahead and put the instrument cluster back in, go down the road, and see if it fixed the problem. So we've racked up about two miles on the trip computer. Let's see if it actually stores the data this time. Key out. Awesome. Yep, it's working perfect. Stick a fork in her, she's done. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. Before I close the video out, let me give you one more look at the Jimmy with everything put back together. I've said it before and I'll say it again, I am so excited about this upgrade. It turned out fantastic and it just does so much for the interior. Not only has this been one of the more invasive projects that I've tackled up to this point, but I'm simply amazed that it turned out as well as it did. I have the dashboard all put back together better than it was before, fixed everything that was broken, got a new trim plate down below there beneath the steering column, that vent functions once again which is super nice. I also had to work through some quirks here and there during the final assembly process. I had to redo a ground wire and I added a little bracket behind the instrument cluster. It's what you mount the black plug to that would have originally come with the vehicle if you had a digital cluster, just to keep everything secure and prevent stuff from rubbing or moving around in the dashboard. But without further ado, let's go ahead and do a final startup. I can just, I can look at that just continuously. It's just, it's just so fantastic. The rest of the interior of this thing is just so clean still. There's a bunch of other little knickknacks that need to be fixed here and there. I'll do a video on that. I'm just fixing all the broken stuff like this armrest. But slowly but surely, we're making this thing super, super nice. Once again, a huge thanks to O'Reilly Auto Parts for their continued support in the series, and a big thanks to you guys for your support as well with all of your comments, likes, and all of that kind of stuff. Again, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like below. It really does help out a lot. I very much appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so. We have a lot more where that came from, of course, at the Jimmy, the 240SX, and some of the other projects, so stay tuned. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.